Hey, welcome back to Zilog and Moto. I had some fun working on today's video, and I hope you enjoy the video as much as I did playing this week's game. And that game is, assuming you didn't read the title of the video before you clicked, Shaq Fu. Yes, for real, Shaq Fu. Before we get too far, I bet you're thinking, oh wow, could this be the first game to get a bomb rating on Zilog and Moto? Well, not to spoil the ending, but I can safely say this game is not a bomb. And it's a far cry from being bad. Why do I mention this? Well, in 2019, everything seems to be stated in extremes. The Jersey Mike's 13 I had last week. The best. The cup of coffee I had from Chick-fil-A instead of Starbucks for breakfast, because I felt like mixing things up. The worst. Everything is either the best or the worst these days. With a lot more things seemingly ending up on the worst in the things. And this applies to everything, not just food and drink, including video games. This linguistic phenomenon has been going on for a while now, and seemingly at some point in the last 10 years, Shaq Fu got painted with the worst brush. Why is that? Because Shaq retired from basketball and ended up getting added to Inside the NBA and ruining the chemistry that Ernie, Charles, and Kenny had? Yeah, I'm a little bitter about that one, can you tell? Well, I don't think that specific reason had anything to do with the internet turning hard on what's definitely not the worst fighting I've ever played. But I do think it may have something to do with a generation change. The kids that grew up with Shaq Mania in the mid-90s had grown up, and now a new generation had discovered Shaq Fu, and without having lived through the aforementioned Shaq Mania, really didn't have a reference as to why this big old slow man seemingly had problems getting senses out on t TV, deserved his own fighting game, and were confused as to why it existed. So the internet does what it always does when it doesn't understand something, it mocks it mercilessly in an effort to make it go away to cover for its own ignorance. As a result, Shaq Fu is on several worst game ever lists, and there even exists a website that's mission statement is to purchase and destroy all copies of the game. Well, I'm here to tell you that not only does the game not deserve that high level of criticism, it might actually be a good game. Let's take a closer look. So, I swear I'm not targeting Electronic Arts titles to do most of my reviews. It's just the way the first 15 have gone, with me trying to get some of those long-running sports titles out of the way. But having said that, you can see this is an EA title. Barely. Uh, with it appearing late 94, EA had long since gotten with the program and started to use more or less standard Genesis clamshell cases. So you can see here. Uh, this case is in pretty good shape. Uh, no hang tab. In fact, this one is cut so close, I can't even tell if this one ever even had a hang tab. But anyway, um, cover art's in pretty good shape. And let's talk about that cover art for a second. I meant first that this is a EA published title, but you wouldn't be able to tell unless you're really paying attention because you got to look really close up here at the top uh, to see that. Shaq's big head literally gets in the way of the Electronic Arts name, and it's only stated in basic white font. Uh, on the side, you've got this very small, sorry, let me give a better shot of that, this very small Electronic Arts logo at the top as well. Um, but again, if you're not looking for it, you're not going to notice it. Um, not really sure why EA went that route with it, uh, unless they were really just trying to emphasize the shack part of it. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe it was sort of a marketing ploy or whatever. Uh, the cover definitely does stand out, and I find the subtitle interesting with Shaq's later in life interest in being a part-time police officer. However, has anyone in the history of the world ever referred to the game as Shaq Fu Enforcer of Justice? As you can see right there. Uh, I think perhaps only 1% of the people familiar with the game probably even know that Shaq Fu has a subtitle. Also, it's a little weird having it up in the corner like that. It seems like it was tacked on late in development or something. The back cover, let me get over here, looks good uh, and implores you to come get yours. 
at the top with some good quality screenshots and details about the game. But again, that Enforcer of Justice is right there in the middle. Um, and it just seems somewhat out of place. It's almost like, you know, perhaps this was going to be the first in a series of Enforce, Enforcer of Justice titles. Either that or the graphic designer just had a black hole in the middle of the screenshots, as you can kind of see here. And uh, just had to fill it with something. So, yeah, just throw that logo in there again. Uh, as we look inside, we've got the usual uh, Electronic Arts yellow hang tab uh, cartridge. And it's in good shape. And a plain looking black and white manual. And notice now we have no Enforcer of Justice anywhere. Um, it's, it's not in the manual anywhere. It's only on the cover. Uh, it's kind of weird. The manual, as you can tell, it's, it's pretty thin. There's not, there's not a whole lot in here. Um, it does have a plain, it does have a page explaining the backstory. As you can see there, the story of Shaq Fu. And it's pretty much all that page and a tiny bit up here at this next page here. Um, and then later on it explains the basics of the game, you know, story mode, and a picture of Second World, and, you know, other stuff. Uh, but nowhere in the manual does it list the different characters in the game, or the special moves for those characters, and it's kind of a big problem in a fighting game. Uh... Having a look at all that information up on the internet, or maybe catch it on the game in one of the various attract screens, is a pain. Also, one last thing about the manual here. You notice there's no warranty card in this one, and that's because... Um, it's not because this copy didn't have a warranty card, it's because there wasn't one. It's because, literally, their idea was... You, you basically rip off the back cover and, and, and mail it in. Or I guess you could, if you were smart, you would you know, just make a photocopy of it or whatever. But just, you know, it's, it seems cheap to me. I, I don't I don't quite get it. I mean, the rest of the game doesn't seem that cheap. So, I don't know. This just seems like a missed opportunity here. They, they could have done a whole lot better with this if they really tried. Um, but anyway, the game itself, though, is still pretty good. So let's go and take a look at that now. So... Shaq Fu. Where do we start? Well, how about why in the world does this game exist? I think that's a pretty good place. Well, to understand that, you'd have to understand where the world was in 1994. Shaquille O'Neal was a larger-than-life star at the time, only matched by Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley from a basketball perspective. Despite the fact that he had only two years in the league under his belt, Shaq was able to immediately dominate the news as well as the court due to his incredible size and strength. If you weren't around back then, go to YouTube and look up videos of Shaq breaking backboards. The modern day NBA backboard and support structure literally had to be reinforced and redesigned to be Shaq proof. This along with a goofy fun loving personality made him a media darling, seeing him to star in film and music career about the same time. At the same time, the 101 fighter genre was absolutely on fire and was by far the most popular genre in both arcades and home consoles. Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat were everywhere, along with SNK's various Neo Geo offerings. So the idea was hatched to take one of the biggest stars of the day, no pun intended, and put him in his own 101 fighter, creating a can't-miss sales opportunity. Well, there's one problem with that. While you can sell a product on name recognition and cologne, to really be successful, your product has to be great as well. People, especially gamers, have a way of figuring out what games aren't quite up to snuff. And when you already have two of the best one-on-one -on -one fighting games ever, why would you need to play anything else? Now, having said all that, you're probably confused, because didn't I earlier state that I was refuting that this was a bad game? And that last paragraph makes it sound like Shaq Fu is not that great. Well, I'll go into more details in a minute, but to sum up, Shaq Fu is a very good technological effort, but it lacks a great individual style, has definite flaws, and just simply isn't as good as its best competition. So, not bad, just not as good. Why is that? Well, let's start breaking it down. 
When you look at the cover of the game, down in the corner it states 24 meg. This refers to the size of the cartridge, and that 24 meg is a bit of a false number, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Just know that at 24 meg, Shaq Fu was one of the largest games ever released for the Genesis. Now, granted, you can have a huge cartridge, but if the game absolutely sucks, it doesn't matter. It's just a larger than normal bag of crap. Usually, however, having a game of that size means that the game within certainly has the capability of being better than the average game, just by virtue of having more room to store things like animations, sound effects, etc. And oh, the game does have animations. Lots of them. The game's developer, Delphine Software, was known for producing games with great animation like At Another World, Out of This World, and Flashback, and Shaq Fu is no different. In fact, I would say that the game is animated better than any other one-on-one -on -one fighter on a 16-bit console, excluding the Neo Geo for obvious reasons. Movements are fluid, and the characters flow across the screen as almost a dance. The backgrounds of the stages are nicely animated too. Not too much, but there are nice little touches in the backgrounds here and there to liven up the experience. Also, in a feature that I can really remember only being in the later King of the Fighters games, Certain stages' backgrounds change depending on the time of day. For instance, sometimes when you fight Kaori at Catwalk Falls, it will be a daytime scene, and sometimes it will be at night. You don't have any control over this, however, but it's still a nice feature that adds a decent variety to the game. In another win from the graphics perspective, the game is incredibly colorful. In fact, it's one of the most colorful games I ever remember playing on the Genesis, up there with stuff like Streets of Rage 3 and Flink. It's certainly the most colorful game we've looked at so far on Xylog and Moto, but seeing as how we're only 15 games in and haven't touched 32X yet, yeah, I should probably settle down. But just to illustrate why this is a big deal, normally the Genesis can only display 64 colors at a time out of the 512 color palette, which is one of the major reasons why the 32X was eventually released. Now, I'm not sure if Delphine found a way around that limitation here, but if they didn't, they certainly managed to do more with the 64 colors at the time than just about anyone else. The music and sound in the game is very good as well. I couldn't quite tell if every level had its own background music, or if some were reused, but there are enough songs to keep the matches interesting, and they all sound good. The instrumentation is solid, and there's no issues with annoying synths that disrupt things. Something tells me a good portion of the game's 24 megs was dedicated to the music. The sound effects are strong as well. There's no voice samples, but there are plenty of different grunts and other martial art type sounds to go around, and the sound effects don't appear to, on the surface to be shared too much between the characters, so fights don't tend to sound very repetitive. There's also other nice touches throughout the game that, if you're paying attention, you'll notice. First, the character portraits beside the character's power bars will change throughout the fight depending on how the fight is going and how much damage the character has taken. This is a cool feature that I think I saw first in Art of Fighting, and it adds just a little bit of flavor to the game. Also, the clock for the matches in is animated very well, just like the characters, and resembles a stopwatch. Something I think showed up later in the Tech and Soul Blade games, and it changes color depending on the stage you're in. Back to the health bars, as you would expect, each player has a small indicator to let you know who the first player is and the second player, but if you'll notice when you're playing against a computer, rather than saying CPU, it shows a little picture of a computer. I don't know why I like that, but I do. I guess because it's just different and original. However, even though they got this little detail right, nowhere does it tell you the name of the characters on the screen. This is a pretty basic detail that most games have, and just seems odd that they left it out. But it's not a deal breaker. Finally, the game has a blood code that enables a small bit of blood to appear when the characters are hit in the face. It's a far cry from Mortal Kombat, as this game is geared towards a younger crowd, but it's another nice little detail. All these nice details unfortunately mean something had to give, and that something was in the control department. Now, I'll admit, the more I played the game and got used to the controls, the better they were, but they're still a far cry from Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And that's a big reason why they were the kings and Shaq Fu has been relegated to a laughing stock for the last 25 years. The first issue with the great praises I sang about the graphics previously, one of the reasons why they were able to pull that off is because the characters are relatively small on screen. Think Streets of Rage 1 small. While that's okay for a beat-em-up with lots of enemies on screen, 
for a one-on-one -on -one fighter, it's considerably less desirable. Games like Samurai Showdown and Art of Fighting make that work by having the characters appear small when they're far apart, and then use scaling to increase their size when they're closer together. But in Shaq Fu, they're permanently small. Now, if you're wondering how on earth does that affect the controls, I'll explain. With the characters being small, it artificially increases the size of the playfield. Because of that, often the characters can be far apart, which in other games would be addressed by jumping towards the enemy. However, jumping in this game feels like you're watching Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, or another fantasy martial arts film where when people jump, they go flying through the air, making jumping towards an enemy tricky, as it's very easy to overshoot them and end up on the other side, and then still be out of position to attack. Shaq Fu does have a button that can be used to run toward the enemy to partially address this, similar to what would end up in Mortal Kombat 3, so in a way you could say Shaq Fu influenced Mortal Kombat 3. But unless you're careful how you use this button, there's a good chance you'll just end up running straight into a kicker punch. Also, another gripe about the controls is that blocking doesn't work very well. Blocking is established in the game either by holding back or by holding down and back. But those are two separate blocks. Holding back blocks high and jumping attacks, whereas if you want to block low, you have to hold down and back. But then that doesn't block jumping attacks. It would be much simpler if block just meant block, and as a result, I didn't do a whole lot of blocking when playing the game. It seems simpler just to stay on the offensive and not give myself a chance to make a mistake as to whether I was blocking high or low. These control issues, along with a very silly premise, are I believe part of why the game has a mythically bad reputation. But in short, it's not a bad game. I describe fighting games as belonging to three tiers. The three tiers consist of Tier 1, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Virtual Fighter, Soul Calibur. Tier 2, SNK titles, Capcom other than Street Fighter, Dead or Alive. And then Tier 3, which is pretty much everything else, putting Shaq Fu solidly in that third tier. And as far as Tier 3 games go, Shaq Fu is certainly competitive, and there's a lot worse out there. If you're a fan of one-on-one -on -one fighting games, I would definitely give this one a look, because you're going to be able to find it relatively cheaply, and I really think you could have some fun with it, especially in two-player mode. For that reason, I'm giving Shaq Fu three stars. Okay, so that's Shaq Fu. As we go through the Sega library here on Xylogamoto, not only have we already seen worse, uh, there is much worse to come, I guarantee it. This one was definitely a pleasant surprise to me, and I'm looking forward to giving the sequel on the Xbox One a shot, even if the games aren't directly related. Tune in next time when we'll go back to the Master System and throw the Wayback lever about as far as we can go. So until next time, remember, whatever you play, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Later!